imagine this. For the last four years, my electric bill has basically disappeared. No surprise hikes, no stress opening the envelope or the email, no wondering if I can afford to keep the AC running pretty low on 105 degrees Texas summer. Instead, my solar system on my rooftop and in our backyard has been quietly producing tens of thousands of dollars worth of electricity. That's not a fantasy, that's real life here in Dallas, Texas. And here is the truth, the utility companies don't want you to hear. This isn't about green energy or saving the planet. It's about numbers, pure, simple math. Every home that makes its own power is a permanent loss for the utilities. And trust me, they notice. And here is the irony. The same utilities that fight rooftop solar, the same ones that lobby to cut net metering or end the tax credit, the same ones that tack on a lot of fees down to your bill, they're also the same companies installing record-breaking amounts of solar for themselves. Not for me, not for you, but for them. They build massive solar farms, hundreds of megawatts, even gigawatts. They own it, they control it, and they sell it back to you at their price. Why do utilities fight rooftop solar while throwing billions into utility scale projects? Let's dig into it today. So the first reason is scale. It's cheaper per watt to build solar farms and wide open land than to scatter panels across rooftops. They can buy thousands of acres, install in bulk, and lower their costs per watt. The second reason is control. If the panels are on your rooftop, you own the power, you control it. If it's on their land, they own the power. That keeps you dependent and keeps them in charge. The third reason is profit. In regulated markets, utilities offer get guarantee returns on their infrastructure spending. When they build a billion dollar solar farm, they can build that back to you, the person that pays the bill, plus earn profits on top. Your rooftop solar doesn't give them a dime. And the fourth reason is the demand from corporations. So big names like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they want renewable energy contracts to meet their climate pledges. Utility cash in by selling them massive amounts of solar power. And the fifth reason is PR and politics. They love the headlines like, utility adds one gigawatts of solar. It makes them look like climate leaders, even while they fight your right to install rooftop solar panels. So let's be clear, utilities aren't anti-solar, they're anti-your solar. Oh, and I forgot to ask, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave some comments down below. And if you are in DFW era, you can definitely reach out to me so you can get a quote and take advantage of that 30% tax credit before the deadline ends. Now back to the video. So back in 2020, I decided I wasn't going to be dependent on that anymore. We went big, over 70 panels, some on the rooftop and some on the ground. Total system size 27.2 kilowatts. Rooftop panels that's south and west facing with Tygo optimizers to handle some shading and ground mount facing due south, perfect tilt, zero shade, so no need for power optimization. I chose bifacial panels because they capture light from the front and the back, pulling in extra power from sunlight bouncing off the ground. So why a ground mount, you would ask? We have plenty of roof space. Well, one, my HOA makes it nearly impossible to put panels on the front of the house. Number two, on the ground, we control everything. Tilt, direction, airflow. Cooler panels make more power. And number three, maintenance is simple. So you don't need any ladders. You don't need to hire anyone, at least in my case. I just walk right up to them and the results speak for themselves. In four years, the system has produced nearly 150,000 kilowatt hours. On average, it kilowatt of capacity produces about 1,470 kilowatt hours per year. That's a pretty strong result, especially since some of my panels face west. Not all of them are south facing. My best year so far, just under 39,500 kilowatt hours. The system costs about $60,000, and with the 30% tax credit, the net cost dropped to $42,000. At $0.17 cents per kilowatt hour, the value of my annual production is about $6,500. Now that means that a payback is around six and a half years. Now we are in year five right now. So in about a year, the system will be fully paid for. And from there on, it's all pure savings. Now imagine that the tax credit is gone. Cost stays at 60,000, same production, same rates. Now their payback jumps to nine or even 10 years. That's more than three years of free electricity gone just because of the timing. 
Now let's talk about something most people never calculate the cost of doing nothing. If you stick with your utility the next 25 years, what does that actually cost you? So let's run the math. The average household uses about 14,000 kilowatt hours per year. At today's rate, around 17 cents per kilowatt hour, that's about $2,400 a year. Over 25 years without rate hikes, that's $60,000. But here's the catch. Texas rates have been rising. Over the last decade, retail rates have jumped more than 25%. Now imagine what's going to happen with all the AI and data centers. Those rates are going to go up even more. Now utility raise rates constantly, and they will absolutely continue to do so. So if rates rise just 3% per year, a very conservative estimate, your $60,000 is now closer to $90,000 or $100,000. Now that's the real cost of doing absolutely nothing. So it's paying your utility $90,000 over the next 25 years, something that you actually could have owned outright when you install solar panels. That money stays in your pocket. You're buying an asset that produces electricity for decades. I always call it like a money printing machine. So when you don't, you're just renting power at even higher rates with no end date. So why do utilities fight so hard against rooftop solar? Reason number one is lost revenue. Over 25 years, the average homeowner might pay the utility hundreds of thousands of dollars. Rooftop solar cuts that off. Reason number two, infrastructure costs. And this one is a big one. More rooftop solar means more upgrades to transformers, lines, and meters. Utilities do not want to foot that bill. Reason number three, their business model. Distributed generation, that's thousands of homes making their own power. That shrinks the utility monopoly. Instead of owning the generation, they become just a wire maintenance companies. So it gives them much less control, much less profit, and then there is a duck curve. During the day, solar floods the grid with cheap electricity. At sunset, demand spikes. Utilities don't want to pay you full price when you already have too much. So they slash buyback rates. They add fees. Sometimes they even block new installation systems entirely. Meanwhile, what are they doing? So in 2024, the U.S. added about 30 gigawatts of utility-scale solar. That's an equivalent of 3 million home systems in a single year. Texas alone, that's 11.6 gigawatts added, like putting a 10 kilowatt system on over a million homes. Florida, 3 gigawatts added, 300,000 homes worth. So while they tell you rooftop solar doesn't work, they're building solar plants the size of small cities. And why? Because they know the economics are unbeatable, because they can sell the power at their own price, and now because they get the profits. You don't. So let's talk batteries. A lot of people ask me, are batteries worth it? And the answer is, it really depends on what you want out of your system. There are literally two categories of solar batteries today. First, backup batteries. They are designed to keep your lights on when the grid goes down, and they give you peace of mind during a storm or outages or hurricanes. They cost more because they have to handle heavy loads and run critical appliances. But the second option is self-consumption batteries. They are the newer option. They don't provide a full backup, but they let you store extra solar during the day, and then you can use it at night. They're cheaper because they don't need all the bells and whistles of a backup system. In Texas, self-consumption batteries are becoming incredibly attractive. Why? Because most utilities pay very little for excess solar you export. If you can store that power and use it yourself, your payback improves dramatically. A typically 10 to 15 kilowatt hour battery today costs around 10 to $15,000 installed. Add one or two to your system and you can boost your self-consumption to 70 or even 80%. That means most of the energy you produce, you actually use. And here where it gets really interesting virtual power plant programs. These programs pay homeowners for sending energy back to the grid during peak demands. Rates can be pretty high, even up to $2 per kilowatt hour at certain times, obviously not all the time. Now, this means that your battery isn't just saving you money, it could potentially start earning you money. 
Now imagine your neighbor running their AC at full blast during a 105 degree day, and instead of the utility cranking up a gas plant, your battery gets tapped and you get paid premium rates. That's happening right now in some markets, and Texas isn't far behind. So do batteries add cost? Absolutely, but done right, they can add also significant value. And just panels, their cost keeps coming down. Here's the bottom line. The 30% federal tax credit ends December 31st of this year, 2025. And after that, your cost jumps by tens of thousands of dollars and your payback stretches three to four years longer. And don't forget that process in Texas I don't know for other states, but can take two to three months. Side design, permitting, installation, inspections. If you wait until the fall, which is pretty much around the corner, you risk missing the deadline entirely. On my system, the tax credit means a six and a half year payback without it nearly 10 years. That's three and a half years of free power gone. Now, four years ago, I made the decision to stop being a passive customer. I invested in solar, and today my family enjoys free electricity, peace of mind, and decades of independence from utility, rake hikes, and cost control. Meanwhile, utilities keep rising rates and keep building solar farms that they own, they control, and they profit from. The 30% federal tax credit ends real soon. And if you want it, you have to act now, not later, not in a few months from now. Now. Because a year from today, you could be watching this video thinking, I should have done it back then and I could already be saving money today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're going to subscribe to the channel, leave some comments down below, and I will see you in my next one.